Okay guys, so today we are going to be talking about, actually, I'll do it. Okay guys, so today we're going, okay guys, okay, okay guys, so if any horsey noises come up, just be forewarned, that's for another video. This guy is just a little bit buddy sour and he's really close to me. But anyways, today we are going to be going over my kick something guide to Alaskan wild edibles. And I know I'm here at my house pretty much, not really too exciting, but I have a lot of field time actually going and showing these berries because a lot of people requested in my previous video that I actually did a collaboration with um, Junkyard Fox to actually go and see these uh, bushes for real when they came time. So that's what I've been doing over the past like three to four weeks as these different um, fruits or as these different uh, berries and plants are coming into their prime for harvest. I went out and just did short little videos kind of showing you guys. Oh, I know. So uh, just doing a short little video of actually showing the real plant. Now I'm gonna be kind of talking about it. And I'm also going to be integrating some pictures and stuff from Discovering Wild Plants. This is an Alaskan and Western Canadian book here specifically about the different wild edibles we have. And so I'm pulling from quite a few of these different uh, plants here. And so, yeah. So I do want to keep in mind too that this is just the beginning to this guide. The reason why I wanted to make this a guide is so that there can be multiple parts. Obviously there are hundreds of wild edibles and different ways to use more common plants. So it's hard to just do one video, but this video is going to cover quite a few of the staples and very quintessential berries and flowering plants. Uh, that are here in Alaska. So hopefully this helps you guys out and hopefully you guys can learn something from this. So let's jump into it. And this is gonna be in no real particular order, just kind of grabbing the ones that I want to talk about. So I have them all conveniently on my phone here to remind me uh, what exactly ones I've done, which, one, which ones need to be done. So starting off, we're gonna be talking about the plants. And so we're gonna be talking about fireweed, First, Now, I wanted to talk about fireweed in this guide because fireweed is an extremely prevalent, like extremely prevalent plant. Obviously, as the name would imply, it is a weed, so it grows everywhere. And sometimes we get entire fields full of this plant. So that is the first one. And how you can use this plant is uh, two parts. You can use it, of course, just taking the flowers and eating them or putting them into stir fries, those kinds of things, uh, to add just a little bit more bulk to your meals. You can also take the leaves in different parts of the plant flowers, once again, and uh, boil them and make teas out of the uh, fireweed plant. So that's the first one. Now, so the next one is Colt's Foot, and Colt's Foot's a little less useful, but it's a very distinctive plant. It looks a lot like rhubarb, but trust me, do not make the mistake because once, uh, <laughs> because rhubarb is a much larger flower, uh, not flower, but uh, kind of like leaf, and that leaf is very poisonous and it will kill you, so do not make that mistake. But generally, Colt's Foot only is a green leaf, and it's a little bit uh, velvety underneath it as well. Um, this plant is particularly good for colds. It's more of a medicinal plant than it is just an everyday life kind of plant. But once again, you can take the big green leaf and make it into teas. So that's Colt's foot. So moving on to the next one, <laughs> he's annoying me. But moving to the next one is Woodland Violet. Now, Woodland Violet is not as much for the tea side, but you can take the flowering parts, the actual flower, and eat the flowers as well. They're another very edible wildflower. Just keep in mind, I guess I did some research on it, and some people have uh, more of a diarrhea effect to it. So you want to keep that in mind and be cautious of consuming a large portion of woodland violet or violet until you know what your body's reaction will be to it. So now we're going to move over to the berries that I went over in this one. And there's a, quite a few of them. 
So starting off is wild strawberries. Some people may not see Alaska as the strawberry type of town or place, but we do get strawberries. Now keep in mind, and I really wanted to show a video of this because our strawberries, it sounds like, oh cool, you have strawberries. We do, but they are very tiny, unless you have particularly have the right types or variants of strawberries. Our wild strawberries that grow indigenous here in Alaska are very small. They're about the size of a dime. <laughs> So that is our strawberry. So the next is raspberries. Now this is another one that once again, unless you have the right types, they generally grow very small. Wild raspberries uh, are very prevalent and you can find them just about everywhere. It's actually kind of amazed me where all you can find them. I've found them on islands, you know, just sandy kind of beach islands, all the way to the backwoods kind of wooded area like we're in right now. So raspberries really grow everywhere and they're pretty great. I will say the only thing I don't like about Alaskan uh, raspberries is that they tend to be very sour or not so much sour, but kind of uh, bitter. So they're not the most tasty thing, but they definitely are a good berry to have on hand. So then next, I'm gonna done kill you. So the next is Nagoon Berries. This is another one that's amazed me at where all you can find it, but generally you're only gonna find it in wooded areas, just different wooded areas all over the place. So Nagoon Berries are another very tasty berry. The issue with Nagoons is that they do only grow one singular flower produces one singular, um, or one singular plant produces one singular berry. So you're not gonna get a high volume of Nagoon Berries, but they are very tasty and once again they are pretty easy to find depending on where you are because I have been in some places where Nagoon berries are very sparse but I've also been in some places where Nagoon berries are just covering the forest floor and, it, and it's actually pretty easy to pick a handful readily. So that is Nagoon berries. So next to that is everyone's least favorite, which is the American dog, or yeah, it's the Bunchberry American Dogwood, Dwarf Dogwood. It goes by a lot of names, and it's just a bunched berry that one flower produces actually a bunch of small orange berries, and these are really bitter, kind of nasty tasting berries, which they are edible, they're not poisonous, just they're really not preferred because they're kind of nasty tasting, and just overall not good at all. Um, so they're definitely not recommended, but this is another viable option that is out there. For so anyways, guys, that is the first part to the kick something guide to Alaskan wild edibles. And like I said, I look forward to making more entries on this point. And I do agree with Junkyard Fox. I think a really overlooked part to bushcraft especially on YouTube is the lack of wild edibles it's sometimes really easy for us to cop out and just bring cliff bars or just you know take a trail mix or some people get really extravagant and they bring out like steaks and it's like whoa this is bushcraft not fine dining so I don't know it's personally up to the person but I like being able to go out and find wild edibles instead of being one of those guys that like brings out a steak and like cooks it. For me that just seems really unauthentic to the bushcraft experience. But anyways guys, that has been my part one or kind of entry one to this guide to wild Alaskan edibles. Without any further ado guys, that's all for now. God bless and I'm out.